you better get ready. Got a lot of things to cover today, and we're going to get to our uh, second segment of understanding the tribulation, death, uh, the elect, the prophecy uh, in review, uh, which is an explanation of some of the things that a lot of people perhaps have not yet grasped as we have been teaching this, uh, going through this process of teaching. But before I get started with that today, I'd like to just kind of look at a, a few things uh, with respect to childhood and your childhood. Let's say that um, you, you've got a, um, a major issue uh, as, a, as, as a person, and, um, and it stems from the fact that you didn't have a bad father, that you had a bad mother. Now, this is important for us because most of the time it is the father who we point the finger at as the bad guy, and generally he is, and not all fathers. We're just talking about bad fathers. We have a, certainly have a large cadre of extraordinary fathers, but we do now live in an environment, and I, I think the lower we go um, into the, the boundary of the present modern age, the more we're going to find dysfunctional families, and therefore we're going to find dysfunctional, irresponsible mothers and fathers, and we're going to find children raised on the internet by the internet processes. But generally it's been the father that has been the, pro the problem, um, and, and, and when there is a problem in the family. If you look at now the Hamite community, that is black, African, and Negro people, 90% of the families are raised without fathers. Children are raised without fathers. Just 70 years ago, the opposite was true. 90% of the households had fathers. Just, just, just 70 years ago, when we, so when we flip the script, we realize there's been a, a, a change dynamic that has greatly influenced the politics of black people, whether they vote for Obama or Kamala Harris or Joe Biden, and also the social structure of black folk, whether they go to church or whether they belong to uh, Black Lives Matter, where they find their spirituality. Younger people, how might black people find their spirituality in Black Lives Matter? And then moreover, a number of them do not seek education as a way of elevation and creation of, of great communities, societies, and families. So what we're presently looking at now in, in that dynamic, and of course, in the J5 community, we're finding similar kinds of atrocities in terms of trending where the fathers are less accountable, the fathers are less visible, and there's more of a destruction process going on within the, the, the family structure. Now I'm coming back to our teaching today about how to, to review the, the you shall not taste of death, uh, that who is the elect, what does that mean, the, the trinity of the, the, the persons of God, um, and, and, and the tribulation, all of that, we're going to come back to that. But I, but I need to deal with this today. And let me quickly move on, and then I'll try to elaborate further that if you've had a bad father, oh, okay, understood. And I think now over the last 25 to 30 to 40 years, people have been able to cope with fatherlessness, especially in areas such as the Hamite, Black, or Negro community. The issue is here now, however, that I'd like to point out is that if you've had a bad mother, if you've had a mother that's a witch, I could use another word starting with a B, but I'll be polite for the time being. Let's say you just had a bad mother. You, you, your father was nowhere to be seen. He, was, he didn't show up. He wasn't responsible. And, and, but you were left raised with your mother, and she at least took the custodial value uh, a responsibility, rather, the custodial responsibility of, of, of rearing you, but really her heart was in a dark place. And she may or may not have gone to church, but may or may not have loved God, and she may not have been a decent or virtuous woman. And so as a result of that, that is greatly impacted upon who you are as an individual. Now, let me tell you why this is important. Because as a pastor, I'm finding more and more now, especially since the advent of Obama in same-sex marriages, I'm finding more and more women who are rebellious to the idea of marriage. And if they do get married, it ain't about them being subject, subject to their husbands. It's about 
a partnership, if you like it, will do it. And it's increasing. And more and more, I'm finding and discovering that women are not sub subject to pastors or pastoral authority. Um, and as a result of that, it is destroying the Hamite church. Now, it is affecting other Japheth churches as well, but it is destroying the Hamite church because women who used to be, the, in many ways, what was referred to as the backbone, they really weren't. They were perhaps more populist, but men were strong in the in character of the church as well, is that these women now are rebelling to the idea of male pastoral authority over them. But that can be dealt with by the pastor, and, and, that, and that, that's not necessarily a, a, a crying or screaming issue because the church age is closed anyway, so it's, it's irrelevant. What is, what, is, is, what is an issue is that you've had a bad mama. Your mama was a witch. She was not a decent person. She could have carried a thousand family secrets that nobody, the children, the siblings, and brothers, and one thing after the other did not know. And as a result of that, the family was dysfunctional without it, you knowing what dysfunctional was because mama was a witch. Now, I'm not here to beat up on women. It's not what I'm here to do. I'm here, I'm here to try to help save children. Let me just say this as well. I'm noticing that during our summer camp this year, we have prayed that God would send us uh, children to educate, and we can be mothers and fathers to them. I'm finding that in, in, uh, in a large number of the men, young boys that come here, that they look upon me as their father. And though there are many of them have their fathers in their presence, they, a strong father like me is somebody they really enjoy. And we also have, in this, our school, the teachers have a mother's instinct to all of the students, and it's a, it's a great thing for our school. But I'm noticing a lot of women now are having financial struggles trying to meet some of the financial responsibilities uh, of just, you know, keeping their children in school and clothed and fed and nurtured and watched uh, during working hours or business hours, et cetera. And th that is an increasing I issue. Um, but also there, there is the, the whole matter of increasingly these women do not want to submit themselves to the authority of God's word or the authority of another man. That the whole idea of a male aspect, now we've gone through the problem with men and we'll talk more about that. We're not, a, you know, we're not going ahead now and, and exonerating men in any way. But what we're now looking at is the fact that we need to turn our eye on perhaps what's happening with some of the women. They still may keep the children in the house, but the children may be better off someplace else because the mother is a witch. Now that's, I know that's harsh language. I know that it is, but sometimes mothers are, and um, in major metropolis areas, cosmopolitan Gotham's like New York. You know they have family advisory boards, they have family uh, issue boards, and, 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 and social issues that look at mothers and fathers and whether the children are being treated the right way or not, whether they're being abused. Um, and then, of course, you got the mama's boys by a mama who hated, or perhaps hated daddy. And on and on and on and on and on, it, it goes. And I, these are some issues that we need to pray about. You can forget about rebuilding the traditional, first of all, the church age is closed, and we'll get to that. That's another issue out of the tribulation, the review of the elect, stepping over the ditch called the grave and, and, and living to, to see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll, we'll get to that. But the rebuilding of the traditional, traditional church could never happen within the Japheth community or the black community now because you don't have women who willing to submit themselves to the authority of the church or the word of God. And I, I know that Tribulation Trump is an awful person, a liar, but he's really a little boy in knickers, and he's just a big schoolboy bully, Tribulation Trump is, who's got the greatest bully pulpit on the planet Earth. But he's not near as evil as Obama, who destroyed the entire church structure. The, the Tribulation Trump is not nearly as evil as Obama. You, you, could, you cannot... The women now do not... Women of, since the Obama generation do not look at the, uh, the authority of men 
anymore as a valid authority or the authority of the Bible as a valid authority. And so if you got a bad mama, your mama's a witch. And your mama could be carrying a whole lot of, women can, women hide a lot of secrets from everybody. Um, you know, um, I, I, it, it's very important that you understand how cautious I'm approaching this lesson, but one that needs to be approached because Satan has been destroying men and women and the mothers have been grinning and they've been protected by the instincts and by the virtuous respect that we generally give to motherhood. We give great respect to motherhood and we don't question it, but we should. We should. And of the last 50 years, we have been more questioning the, the, the authority of men and their abdication of that responsibility, and therefore immediately making mothers angels when they have not been in many ways. They've been far worse. Indeed, perhaps many of the fathers would still be on the scene if the mothers were not such witches. And I pity the pastor who thinks he can ever build a church the way traditionally it was built. First of all, the church age is closed, but you're not going to hear that, and other people are not going to listen to it either. The same way Jews don't believe that the Jewish age is closed. But those who do plan to build churches using traditional issues are going to have to give women superior platitude and, 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 and superior attention. Otherwise, you're not going anywhere. And then the Black Lives Matter now and other kinds of organizations and institutions and television and internet. And you know, I can go on the internet and you can find a whole lot of people preaching on the internet now. And women too, by the way, a ton of them out there hollering and screaming and you know, rolling their bodies around, rolling their eyes, falling into deep trances and talking in tongues. And it, I mean, it is a carnival out there on the internet now with women. But the other thing is, did you have a bad mama? And you know, I have, did, and, and, but your mother has been protected by the kind of virtue we naturally attribute to motherhood. We don't question mothers because, because they're mothers, but we should. Now I was praying about this all last night and this morning as I'm looking at some things. And we generally give the responsibility and we beat up on men and rightly so. They, they are, they are, they've been given the responsibility, but we now need to look very carefully at some of these other kinds of issues that are going on, the things that women do, mothers in particular, that they do. And then their daughters grow up and do even worse. We have a lot of uh, children in our school that are brought here by their mothers. And um, because they, that, that instinct and that responsibility, but strong leadership needs to happen. And the church has been absent of strong leadership for more than 40 years now. And so as a result of it, we've got these issues. And young men in particular, if you were raised by a, 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 a mother that was less than godly, she may have been in church, don't mean that she was a godly woman. She may have attended every worship service that, 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 that when the doors opened there, she, or the church she was there, but doesn't mean that she was a virtuous woman. And maybe your mother's carrying a lot of secrets. I mean, just carrying a lot of secrets. And oftentimes these women are carrying these secrets to their grave. But you have to be mindful of this. God is a just God. That's the thing I think I want to come to as I, you know, I, a few moments I'll have left to go back to review. But you have to remember that God, Almighty God, his name is Jesus, is a just God. He is a just God. He indeed is that. And uh, in, to men in particular, you may want to look at the strength of your life. Have you been emasculated by by your mother, not by your father, but by your mother. 
sons will tend to listen to their mothers. If there is a rift between the father and the mother, the mother then has carte blanche to say to the son anything she wants against the father and can persecute him and then put seeds of destruction inside of the son and he'll never be anything. All the days of his life he can live three lives and he'll never be anything because the mother, like mother's milk, put mother's ill, put put ill-gottenness in him, and he can never develop. He can never develop. He can never develop and be the kind of man, the strong stomp down man that he needs to be, a man who can lead women. And I see a lot of that in pastors and churches in years gone by. They were mama's boys, and they really did not have the strength to be able to stand up to a woman. They couldn't do it. At any rate, I'm asking you that you would pray for a lot of the women and the children, that God would send even more women and more children to our school because we have strong, the, the women in our church, they are submitted to Pastor James David Manning. Everybody else can call them anything they want to call them, say you're crazy for being there, call them brainwash or whatever the hell else they want to call them, but they are strong in terms of their commitment and developing strong powerful world leaders, and same thing with the men of our church. They are submitted to the authority of James David Manning. And we don't have it any other way. We don't have it any other way. But pray that, that more will be sent our way so we can inculcate and instill this process in the development of God's people. I pity the man who had a mother who hates him. Oh, she'll never tell him that. But she hates him because she hates his father. And not that she hates his father, but she hates the other men that she knew before she knew his father. Or she hates the men that she knew while she knew his father. I pity that young man if he cannot find his way out of that morass and find his own personal identity and strength. He's sitting up in there in a meeting now with his arms around his wife, listening to Joyce Meyer. What the hell is that? Sitting up there hugging his wife while Joyce Meyer's up there pontificating. He's a man who's been beat up by his mother. His mother hated his father and hated all the other men she knew, and she knew plenty of them. She'll never tell him that, but Jesus knows. And there he is sitting there listening to Joyce Meyer, a Paula White. You know, or one of them women out there, or, or some man who looks like a, acts like a woman, like a T.D. Jakes, who acts like a woman. He's sitting up in there. He's weak. He's subservient. He's been beaten down by his mother, who hated him because she hated his father. And she hated his father because his father stood up to her, and she been wild and foolish and doing a whole lot of things and flitting and flirting and sexual up, sexing up all over everywhere. The father didn't deal with it, wasn't gonna have it, wasn't gonna have that. And she simply hated him because he hated her promiscuous and, and if you will, lewd sexual activities. And he stood up to her. And so she takes it out on her son vicariously and if you will, she beats up the boy all his days. He could be 50 years old <clears throat> coming to dinner. She'll, be, she'll still beat him up the same way she beat up her husband when she met him, and he was only 25. She's still beating up on her husband, a, a son rather, 50 years later. And these are some things that the Outlaw War Missionary Church, the Great Tomorrow's Elementary School, and the Outlaw High School does take care of greatly. We make young men. Now, it's not easy. I can tell you that now. It isn't easy to do, but we're doing it. I ask that you would pray for us to give us strength that we might be able to continue to do this work. But also, that you pray for these mothers, that they would introspect and take a look at themselves and think a little bit about the fact that their hatred for their Husbands or their lovers or the men that made them pregnant is greater than their love for Jesus or their love for their children. Their hatred is so intense. And that's why a lot of them don't come in and deal with Pastor Manning. They don't want to come anywhere near this church. They're listening to me online, but they ain't coming inside this church because their hatred for men is stronger than their love for Jesus. But I'm going to keep on preaching. Is that right? 
I don't care if I'm preaching God's word. And by the way, I'm a stomp down man. The kind of man that every woman and every child needs. So I thought I would say those things today. I thought it was important if we would get started with that segment of today. Um, because we're in, and again, going back to 70 years, I, I, I look at a flipping of the script. It's absolutely, it's like we're going back into the time when we didn't have telephones or television or automobiles or gasoline. That's how wretched and reversed the social structure of our community is. And that's why the tribulation is a part of what it is. Now, let me say this as well. I, I was saying to you yesterday that a, a number of people don't understand the tribulation. Southern Baptists do, and we'll give God the praise for at least the fact that they do, but they, the, the devil taught the Southern Baptists in uh, the back way. He taught Southern Baptists that the tribulation, that there'd be a rapture, and then everybody else would go through hell. That's not true. It's not true. The, the rapture is one of the loneliest verses in all of the Bible. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, it's the loneliest verse in all the Bible, the rapture. But it doesn't happen before the tribulation. The tribulation, as we explained on yesterday, to help people come to terms with this and help people discover whether or not you're the elect. Now, I'm saying to you, if you're listening to me, if you're able to handle the strength that, uh, of the word of God that I'm able to dispense on a daily basis, if you're able to listen to me and then you are more, more than able, you're able to submit yourself to the authority of what I am and who I am, if you're able to submit yourself to this authority, then I would greatly, in um, standing, as I stand before Jesus, would say you are called to be one of the elect. By that, I mean one of the persons that have been chosen to step over the grave, the ditch called the grave, and that you are called to live and reign with Christ for a thousand years where two, th two things will be happening. The devil will be thrown into a bottomless pit for a thousand years and you will be able to live and reign, not taste of death. There'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more war, no more hatred, no more injury, no more sickness for a thousand years, you'll be able to live and reign and rule with Christ during that period of time. That's those people are who do that. Are not, they're not Christians. They're not Christians. Now, they, some, some of them could have been Christians. I'm not saying they were not. But we're moving from the period of the Jews to the Christians, from the Christians to the elect. That period of people, that group of people are known as the elect. I am an elder and a missionary and a messenger of the elect. And if you're listening to me and you're able to submit yourself to the strong authority which builds strength in your life, because iron sharpens iron. If you're able to submit to the strong authority in my life, it'll create strong authority in your life. And if you're able to do that, then I would, I would, I would bet my last money that you've been called to be a member of the elect. But let me say this to you, because a lot of people don't know what the tribulation is. The tribulation spoken of by Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. The tribulation spoken by Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, is the opposite of creation. I say the tribulation is the opposite of creation. In seven days, Elder Smith, a virtuous reader, virtuous reader, virtuous reader, uh, in seven days, God created the heavens and the earth. You look at Genesis chapter 1 through Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. God created the heaven and earth and then spoke about it. That was the creation. And in Genesis and Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, Jesus speaks about the tribulation. The tribulation is where God destroys all of creation. And we can, we'll take some time out and, and, and go through this process. I was talking about going down to Haiti and, and do this uh, Mount Transfiguration teaching of, of Revelations. By the way, let me remind y'all that Pastor Salir is in need of, of your help and assistance. I know, I thank all of y'all, y'all raised the money, you gave the money for him to be able to travel to Egypt, though our travel date has changed for reasons reflecting our school, our students are in doctoral programs, law programs, and, and also financial issues. We had to change our travel date. 
But when we do go, doc, our Pastor Salir, Bishop Salir, will go with us. He's the bishop and school and a, a, a church and, and ministry. And I need you to know that Bishop Salir is in need of your giving. I haven't sent him anything recently because we we're raising everything for his trip. But I need y'all to kick in now. Bishop needs Bishop Salia needs your money. He needs your help down in Haiti. You know he ain't got nothing down there. You know that. You understand that clearly. Bishop Salia down in uh, in Haiti. So let's start sending some gifts earmarked for Bishop Salia. Anyway, so here's the deal. The creation process lasted seven days, and I'm now convinced that the. Uh, uh, Brother Joseph Marsh, I'm convinced that the uh, destruction uh, creation, uh, the tribulation will last seven days as well. Now, Mr. Engineer, don't put it up as of yet. I'm going to show people something. I'm going to show you this, the front of this Bible. This is my Bible, right? It says the Honorable James David Mann here, right? This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Now I'm going to have Elizabeth build me something here, right, which will say on the, front, on the front cover of this Bible, we'll consider the front cover of this Bible the beginning of all things, the Genesis, right? We'll consider the front of this Bible the Genesis, the beginning of all things. We'll consider the, the Genesis of all things. Is that right? Now, we will, uh, uh, and so this is the creation now, the tribulation, oh, Mr. Angel, let me just put this Bible up to the side. The tribulation is the back of the Bible, where God cre destroys. First, the front of the Bible, he creates. The back of the Bible, he destroys. And you notice the back of the Bible and the front of the Bible are the same dimensions. So if, Elder Smith, virtuous reader, if the front of the Bible, virtuous reader, it was the creation process, and then the back of the Bible is the same dimensions, as the front of the Bible, then we understand that there were seven days of creation and there'll be seven days of destruction. And we'll come back to that, uh, Sister Bennett, uh, Esther Bennett, we'll come back to that a little bit later on. Evangelist sacrifice, make note of that. Evangelist sacrifice, make note of that, evangelist, that the back of the Bible and the front of the Bible, are not, they are of the same dimension. And then everything in between those two covers is what we have the period of the Adam and Eve, the period of the Jews and the Christians, and the period after the close of the Christians, there'll be a period out here called the period of the elect. Now, Mr. Engineer, I asked you to do a diagram for me. Could you put it up? Because, that, because people can perhaps understand a little bit better. All right, thank you very much, sir. The, that's the front of the Bible right there, right? The front of the Bible, we've got the creation process, starting in Genesis chapter 1 through Genesis Chapter 2, verse 17. That's the way God spoke, let there be light, and all that kind of good stuff that God spoke, and every seed and every herb and every fruit bearing tree, and all that good stuff that God spoke, which was the whole process of creation. And they made man and formed man out of the dust of the earth, and then he formed a woman out of the rib of man. All of that. That's all that good stuff there. And that's creation. That's all. After that, we get into a whole lot of problems with people. By the time we get to Genesis chapter 3, the devil done stepped in there. But that's, that's the creation, front of the Bible. The back of the Bible, the back of the Bible, as explained by Jesus in Matthew 24, verses 1 through 51. Now, the reason why no other prophet, not Moses, nobody else, and one of the things that uh, evangelist sacrifice, <coughs> evangelist sacrifice, one of the things that you might want to look at is Jesus didn't give anybody the power to speak the creation. He's the only one that can do it. He's the only one that can do it. The creation. Moses didn't have it. Daniel didn't have it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Deborah didn't have it. Sarah didn't have it. Jonah didn't have it. None of those. God, only God himself could speak creation. You understand that, right? So only Jesus himself spoke about the tribulation, which is the destruction of creation. But one of the things that we can give God the glory about and you can take this in, you know, you can take this and throw it in the, in, the, in the face of the devil. You can throw this in the face of the devil and tell the devil that uh, Bob Jackson, 
you know, Bob Jackson, Bob, haven't talked to you in a long time. I gotta, gotta send you some love, Bob Jackson. I gotta send you some love. Bob, I don't even know if you listen, you probably been so discouraging. Probably don't even listen to him anymore. Bob, things have changed. And we have to move with the cloud of glory. But Bob Jackson was such a help to us going back years ago. But then when Tribulation Trump came along and all those people started shooting daggers at me, Bob, I had to move on. But we got to send you some love, Bob Jackson. But here, you can throw this in the devil's face. Say, well, Pastor Manning, I mean, he's the only man that really has a full and complete understanding and complete knowledge of the whole idea of the uh, tribulation. I ain't never, the way he teaches it, it's absolutely superb and perfect. It's almost as if it came from, uh, from heaven itself, the way Pastor Manning teaches the tribulation. Because he says it's the destruction of creation, which makes a lot of sense. And then we have the 1,000 year reign of peace. It makes all the sense in the world. It is perfect, perfect, perfect sense that the pastor is taught. And you might want to throw that in the devil's face. Say, Pastor James David Manning, right? Now he's been teaching this now for some time. So what I wanted to be able to do today, we had to have our little introduction. And by the way, let me go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that um, we, we're living in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a wicked sexual time where the value of a woman's sexual organ has been overrated over against the value of a man's sexual organ. And now this is a family show and children are listening and we give God the praise, grandmothers as well. And as a result of that, there has been this imbalance and because of the value of the woman's sexual proclivities and potentials, there's an automatic assignment to her of virtuousness that is not necessarily assigned to men. And as a result of that, close looks are not taken at their, their hearts and how they raise their children. And it was never my intent to beat up on anybody, but I want to save the children and save those who are beating, save those who have come, save those mothers who are not mothers, but they're indeed, they are witches. And Jesus, you'll help me to spread this message of love. Though it doesn't sound like love according to the LGBTQ community, it probably sounds, but I think that once one settles down and listens to me carefully, they realize this is a message of love. So we thank you for having the opportunity to have done that today. And in your name, Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Now we want to continue our review <clears throat> because a lot of people, you know, Elder Smith said to me, he said he didn't even know what the tribulation was. Uh, well, he didn't know what the elect was, right? And, and this is like, you know, people, yeah, they heard about, you know, Pentecost, and they've heard about the crucifixion, they've heard about the baptism, they've heard about the Holy Ghost, but the elect, they don't know what that is. And a lot of people will never know. Fortunately, at least you're listening. And that's why God has made me the teacher that I am. I'm a teacher. I'm not a hooper. I don't jump up and down and put my hand behind my ear and close my eyes and start yelling and screaming. I mean, if that's what you do, fine. If that's what happens, then fine. I'm not necessarily against you for that, but I'm just, I'm a teacher. God's made me a teacher of the Word of God. I'm a teacher. The Bible said that Jesus went up on the mount and he sat down and he began to teach them. Blessed are ye. Blessed are ye, blessed are ye, and blessed are ye if you're one of the elect. Blessed are ye if you're willing to submit yourself to the authority of God's word. You're not a rebellious woman. You're not a woman who's burned your bra. Like, I think Esther Bennett said she burned her bra. Anyway, she's a member of our church now. Um, you're not a bra burner, Christian. You're not a, you're not a rebellious, if you will, uh, woman, thou art loose. That's what T.D. Jake said. Woman, take that bra off and burn it. He told you. And them women were burning bras. Woman, thou art loose. You're not a bra burner. You're not a rebellious woman. You're under the authority of Almighty God and you're under the authority of His Word. All these bra burner churches. Listen to Joyce Meyer. This man sitting up there with his arms around his wife while Joyce Meyer and because he's been his mama did him the same way. His mama, she probably uh, up until the age he was 12 years old, would probably take him into the bathroom and stand there and, and help him pee. 
I mean, 12 years old, then just got shame of it. Why the other schoolboys were asking, say that boy, say that man sitting, there, sitting, up in, sitting up in there listening to Joyce Meyer or T.D. Jakes or Creflo Dollar, sitting up in there listening to him with his wife, arms around his wife. His, probably, his mama probably used to take him to the bathroom after she potty, she didn't potty train him until he was 12 years old. She'd take him to the bathroom and help him pee to finally some of the boys in the school found out about it and started, he said, your mama don't take you to the bathroom to help you pee? No, my mama, I ain't mama. I don't, I, since I stopped peeing in a diaper, my mama, ain't, my mama don't go to no bathroom with me. But many of these men you see sitting up in these churches like Brooklyn Tabernacle, you know, and Paula White and Joyce Smy and T.D. Jakes, their mama took them to the bathroom and helped them pee. They were 12, 13 years old. Anyway, the, um, but, a, but a person, a woman that, uh, you know, maybe your mother abandoned you. Maybe your mama was just a witch. She didn't have no maternal instincts whatsoever. She may have been a woman, but she didn't have no maternal instincts. I mean, Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox probably had more of a maternal instinct than your mother did. You know what I mean? It, it's just, uh, men don't have maternal instincts. They don't. But women are supposed to have that naturally. You know, your mother probably hatched you and walked away from you and didn't even think about you for years. She cared nothing about you because she didn't have the instinct. There was nothing inside of her to cause her to think about you in a loving and caring way. Even bears take care of their cubs and lioness take care of their cubs. But your mama walked away from you because she doesn't have a, a maternal instinct. She's a witch. She doesn't have a, a, no maternal instinct. She, listen. And, 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 and God's got me talking to it. I got to talk. I got to teach up in here. The Lord had me raise this as an issue. And those of you who are able to submit yourself to the authority that's in God's word, that's in me, I'm the Lord's servant. I'm not my own servant. I'm the Lord's servant. I'm not my own servant. I said, I said, I said, I'm the Lord's servant. I'm not my own servant. If you're willing to submit yourself to the authority of God's word, well, praise God. But we got to weed out some of these women who have no maternal instinct. It, they could drop a baby. You know, I've heard stories, you probably heard them too. Women have babies, drop the baby, and put it on somebody's doorstep. I don't know who cut the umbilical cord. They put it on the baby on somebody's doorstep and they never look back. There's no maternal instinct. There's no attachment to the child. The woman is a witch. She has no paternal instinct. She can get pregnant, but she's not really a woman in that regard. You heard about it. Happens all the time. It happens all the time. The woman is a witch. She's incurable. She's designed to go to hell, uh, designed as a servant of the devil. No maternal instinct, don't care anything about children. Keep them children away from me. You see what I'm saying? That's why the Outlaw Church and the Great Tomorrow's Elementary School is such an extraordinary place. Y'all need to pray for us, help us, and take care of us so we can take care of the children and reverse these trends. Now, finally. So Elder Smith said he didn't know what the elect was all about. He had no idea what it was all about. Well, now you're finding out. Just keep listening. And there are two things that you're going to have to do. One is you're going to have to become a Sabbath worship, give up all that Sunday congregation in the apostate, as jo Joseph Marsh would say, or the age of the church that is closed. You're going to have to submit to the Sabbath. And then you're going to submit to the first fruit offering and the tithe. Every time God gives you a dollar, you got to give God a dime. Every time. Winter, spring, summer, autumn, rain, shine, sleet, or snow. Never change. Every time God gives you a dime, you give God. I give God I gives you a, a dollar, you give God a dime. He gives you a dime, give him a penny. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon. Uh, 
uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man who will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he. I'm the Lord, sir. James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.